part one it says is based on this book which is not out yet, Crimes of Capitalism in Kenya, Massacres, Murders, Detentions, and everything else. And that is press cuttings again uh, on Moy Kenya's reign of terror in Kenya. Uh, there, is a, there is a lesson in the way we are taught history and we understand history. We, are, we tend to focus on individuals, whether it is Kenyatta or Moy or Kibaki or whoever. All of them, if you put them in a basket, they represent just one thing, capitalism. Whatever they do, whatever they did, whatever is going on in Kenya today, is part of the crimes of capitalism. That's why we named this book Crimes of Capitalism, because it's not these individuals. My, the next book I'm working on is looking at the ideology at the time of independence. Kanu was for socialism in 1960. Uh, and then gradually, through imperialist intervention, it was turned into a capitalist party. And that, that record of ideological battle in Kenyan history is what I'm trying to sort of document next. Um, so, when imperialism realized the danger that socialism posed for Kenya, because they would not be able to exploit the country. They brought in Kenyatta and all the rest of it. They elim then eliminated all opposition to capitalism. Whether there's Odinga, whether there's Pino, Gama Pinto, and you can read about all that in, in this book at the Komozi Library, Pio Gama Pinto. What he, said, what he stood for and why he was killed. There's another book which can also help in understanding Kenya's history, is Kenya's World of Independence. So the library is a place to go to for all this. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is this theme of the meeting today is liberating the mind. The first thing to do to liberate our mind is not get caught up in this Im 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 imagined world created by the Western media, the imperialist media, and the leaders and their parties, that you get caught up in a little election somewhere, whether this party wins or that party wins. It's irrelevant because all of them fighting for so-called seats in the parliament are fighting for capitalism. Whoever wins, some candidate may be defeated, but ultimately capitalism will win unless Kenya goes through a phase where what is happening in other African, many other African countries, people go on the street and say, we have had enough. We want a change of, not leaders, not parties, but a change of system. So part of doing that is to understand what was happening in the past. At the time in 1955, 57, or 48 onwards, there was a huge barrier. The colonialism had come and controlled everything, taken over our land, turned people in, in, into wage laborers and slaves. They used to give them these kipandes, which literally they had to carry it very around their neck with their the record of the labor and so on, they could not move from place to place without it. So it was an enslavement. In that situation, with the whole British Empire behind the colonial government, how do you, how do you fight this thing? It's a hopeless situation. We think that we are in a difficult situation today. But we can meet here and we can talk. In those days, there was no such thing. And things came together. People organized, and uh, trade unions and mob and movement came together, and they fought, and they brought independence. That is an achievement which has to be recognized. The colonial government destroyed tons and tons of our documents. They burned them, they went and threw some of it in the Indian Ocean, 
so that we would not see what crimes they were committing. They took the rest with them to England. Some of it was, uh, they, uh, they pretended it did not exist. They hid them somewhere in deep holes somewhere. Bits and pieces they released, and what they released was very sanitized. So we don't even have proper documentation, the full documentation. Although lots of information has been coming out recently, and more is known through various books which you can find in the library, which now sh shows what they were up to. And like one of these guys said, if we are going to sin, the British characters were saying, if, you, if the governor, or I don't know who some big character is in this book, uh, if you want to sin, let's sin quietly, let's sin in the dark, so people don't know what you do. We can massacre people, we can rape women, we can, I don't know, do whatever we want to do. Kill people, but do it quietly, do it so that people don't know. The mass media, the way news is carried is important. And if you hide news, People don't know, a generation grows up not knowing, like Israel does with the street names. It destroys the street names. When you, you grow up on a particular street, you know the name of the street, you know the buildings there. They come and destroy the name, they destroy the makeup of the street. And gradually over the years they hope that we will forget where they lived, where the home was. And, and, and that is how they eradicate our, destroy our memories. And we need to, reclaim our memories if you're going to liberate our minds. A schoolboy lies dead after being shot by the police during the something, riots. Now, I have a feeling that people who live in Madani and other parts of Nairobi will be able to relate to that image. Police killing a, a, a person is, is no news anymore because it happens, I think I saw something coming out the other day, that five people have been killed in Mathari yeah. in the last week or so. Now, if that is the level of repression that's happening in Kenya today, this is nothing. This is just one incident, but it's important to capture the images mm -hmm. so that that is our history. No school will show this picture to the kids in school. It's, it's not considered uh, History. This is even an event that can be destroyed, but that is our real history. This one is is, is showing the Mau Mau uh, attacking Mau Mau, a police raid. This is the police looking for Mau Mau and a detention camp. Now this is really concentration camps. They have built concentration camps, but didn't call it that because it was too dangerous. It would have linked up with the Nazis and all the rest of it. But exactly the same techniques of torture were used. As if, you know, I've sort of seen other things where there was a lot of collaboration and learning from what uh, Hitler was doing with what the colonialists were doing in Africa. The solidarity of working people in Africa. South Africa is the oldest communist party in Africa. And if you look at some of the resources they have collected, I found lots of stuff on Kenya there, which I would not get in, in a Kenyan documentary. They have, look, they have digitized the whole lot of things. So it's, it's, it's important, interesting to see the linkages across the borders, these artificial borders. We may be miles away, we may be countries away, but that is solidarity between the working class in South Africa and what people are doing here. Some more pictures, they're taking Mau Mau. Putting them in detention camp prisons. And you will all have seen this, this kind of pictures. Now, I mean, I keep taking a jump to, it's, it's easy to understand colonial oppression. Okay, it's so bad, you know, the rest of it. They wanted colonies, they wanted our oil, minerals, whatever, and enslave our people. Fair enough. We fought, we threw them out. And what happens then? Thousands of people sacrificed their lives. People lost their land, they never got their land back. 
What happened is a few characters, and I record some of this in the screen book, um, were instigated by Britain. The, the last governor of Kenya, Sir Malcolm MacDonald, he was sent here especially before independence uh, because they realized that they could not control Kenya anymore. Independence has to come. But they wanted independence to come at their own, on their own terms. How do you do that? So they brought in a so-called progressive governor, Sir Malcolm MacDonald, who came to Kenya. And among the first thing he did was to go and see Kenyatta in detention. So the Britain had built up the image of Kenyatta. And they said, hurry up with the independence before these radicals get together. But if you look at the 1960 manifesto of Kanu, it is very, very socialist. Uh, and there's something I'll be documenting in my, in my next book. Uh, suddenly things changed. Kenyatta came, and next to here is the uh, session of paper number 10 on African socialism. And who wrote this? Officially, they said Tom Boya wrote it. But it wasn't Tom Boya who wrote it. It was a CIA, US American guy sitting in the Ministry of Economic Development who wrote it. It came out in the name of Moya as a local product. product. And so Kenya became in, uh, uh, capitalist. The crucial periods of 57 onwards, 58, uh, before independence, 1960, they had already mapped out. It was decided not to return the lands to the people who fought. And, and, and they gave money to Kenyatta. So he, he bought a lot of land with that money, so-called loan, for himself and his family and his friends. The people who fought in the forest and died and who went into concentration camps lost their land. And there is no way they could have claimed back the land. If they said, this is our land, they didn't have back to date. And they used all these techniques to defeat them. But part of the heritage of uh, colon uh, neo-colonialism was British Army, British uh, military, which so-called advised Kenya. It was there, we were talking about this yesterday at the time of the coup. The, the British had to be called in in 64 in the mutiny to control this crazy guy who wanted a different Kenya. Uh, but th this white guy, I think it was Patrick Shaw, if I'm not mistaken. And there is this other guy who is currently going around also killing people. But he may not be white, but it's the same kind of a thing is, is happening. So that is, that is part of our, our heritage. Mm. Our taxes pay for the armed forces, for the Navy, Air Force, and all the rest of it. Supposedly to defend us. But what happens? You go out in innocent student. This one is Sabah Sabah Resistance, 1990. People just demonstrate peacefully. Nobody is fighting, nobody has a gun. And immediately the GSU and the police come with guns. Every time the U.S. city goes on strike, they send their guys who rape women, who kill, beat up people. Something is happening in Bakary right now. And, um, and, and, and the irony is that we are paying their salaries. Uh, even the guy who stops us on the road, he becomes our master, whereas he is our servant, to me, like in Wapi. It's, it's, they, they have altered the rules, they become our masters. And we have no right to speak, to demonstrate, to write, to read. I had to run away from Kenya because I wrote something on Piyogama Pinto. And it was a democratic country. I had nothing, done nothing wrong, just recorded history. And I had to run away because of that. Now, that is not so bad. I, I survived and I'm still alive, more or less. Uh, but to go out on the street and to face this Umakalis with guns and actually shooting people, I, th I think it's the height of, I don't know, height of what even. This is another 
police kill youth during summer summer. Actually, they, they, they kill a, 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 a person. So it goes on. More than 10 university students are in prison in Kenya. Most of them are in 82, and so on. They, they, again, they were not armed, there was nothing. If it was and they get killed. And again, the uh, recording of that thing was not done systematically in Kenya. This is a record, this Kenya news was published by the Committee for the re Release of Political Prisoners in Kenya, in London. They published lots of things, including a series of uh, newsletters called Kenya News. And they are documenting this. Massacres, massacre in Wajir, whereas people here probably didn't even know what was going on there. Uh, Jail Political Prisoners, it actually documents and lists the names of people who you probably know, some of them know. Uh, detained without trial, this my name, Kenyati, you might know. <coughs> that is a Lungosio, all a student, 10 years, and so on. 12 Air Force soldiers sentenced to death, and 1,000 others jailed for up to 25 years. Now, you just don't, just kill people, honestly. Jail political prisoners, Detain without trial, and changing, the, they use the laws, the, the law which is supposed to protect us, our constitution which is there to protect us, although we have a new one now, but even the old one had, gave us certain rights. This one, they just, Kinecha and Moi both, just go around changing laws because they control the parliament through bribery and corruption and all the rest of it. Um, Kenyatta, when, when independence came, he was the prime minister who was to be controlled by the parliament. He changed the constitution, became president, increased his power. He could do whatever he liked without going through parliament, without anybody's permission, and he, he used his network of uh, district commissioner, provincial commissioner, which is a colonial hangout for it, uh, to do whatever he wanted. So whichever part of the country you were in, you were controlled by him. So a constitutional amendment in 1988 increased the powers of President Moy and his police, so they can kill now without and we did keep doing anything, to do anything. Uh, 1963 to 67, entire northeastern region, number skill, 20,000. This is 1963 to 67, after independence, which people fought for. And there was a very powerful Somali League which was fighting for independence. It was, in a sense, paralleling what Momo was doing. Uh, in, in, in the Somali context, in the uh, northeastern context. They were fighting, if you look at the program, it's more or less what Mawa was fighting for. And, and these people are now condemned as uh, outsiders and foreigners and terrorists and others of it, and killing 20,000 people. And nobody's bothered about that. Nobody in Kenya, nobody, well, I can't say nobody in Kenya, but the international community, which is clear, if one person is killed, uh, by somebody in Matare for uh, resisting arrest or something, it becomes an international affair. The BBC broadcasts it, and Voice of America sent ambassadors here and all the rest of it. Uh, 1980, Garissa, 300 to 400. 1984, West Pocot, 800 to 1,000. 9 February 1994 was here, more than 1,000. And this is Number skill, not just beaten up or something. Jail political prisoners detained in the trap, tortured in Kenya intensified. So this this is the way to control people. You torture them and they build this whole Nyaya house, especially with special torture chambers, probably 
is uh, supplied and by Israel and trained by Israeli officers. In, 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 in. Political prisoners detained in the trial. Now, then the law comes into it also. They can say, oh, but he went through a process, he or she went through a process of law. That we, we didn't just arbitrarily address them. But the law was also controlled by them. And then very often they had trials at midnight without lawyers, just kind of send some, bring somebody up and uh, sentence them to all sorts of things. Mm. Yeah, uh, arrested, trial date and sentence, two years, 15 months, four years, 10 years. It's just madness, really.